Good Tuesday morning, February 11th, a little after 8.30 Eastern Time. Michael Clark here with BAM Weather. We're going to talk about a parade of winter storms, a very cold pattern, and winter hanging around for the next several weeks. Be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel and share it with a friend. We've got a busy one today. Uh, today I'm in Louisville doing some, some speaking, so you're going to get a little bit of my slideshow uh, preview here because I'm going to show you some of the stuff I'm speaking about today. So but we'll talk about that winter pattern here that we're looking at. I want to start with Clarity Radar this morning. Look at all of these winter weather alerts around the area. Crazy, just crazy. We've got a winter storm going through the Ohio Valley right now, uh, down through the uh, along the Ohio River, and uh, a lot of heavy rain down to the south. You've got winter storm warnings out here, Iowa, Missouri, Kansas, Illinois. You've got winter storm watches in northern Illinois all the way through Michigan, northern Indiana. This is great. It's just a very, very busy pattern here um, for winter weather. Let's look at the snowfall forecast here. Over the course of the next three days, we'll just talk about this very quickly. You can see the swath of heaviest snow here. Let me move this down just a little bit so you guys can see the, the, the uh, legend there. Heaviest snow is going to go through northern Kansas, Missouri, southern Iowa, northern Illinois. And you're going to be looking at areas of 6 to 10 inches of snow. We've seen some northwest trends overnight in the data with this heavier swath of snow. The one ongoing right now down here across the south and the east, again, you can see uh, where those totals are going to be the heaviest. Um, not a huge, not a, a majorly heavy storm over the next three days. Nonetheless, um, some snow working in New Jersey and again back into the possibly the New York metro area the next three days. Just look at the next seven days real quick here um, with the snowfall forecast. We'll go right here. And again, you can see some heavier snows are going to work back into the northeast. Look at the seven day totals here across eastern Iowa, northern Illinois. Uh, getting into, I'm going to refresh my page real quick, getting into um, Milwaukee, Chicago. This is crazy. Seven-day totals of 17 inches of snow. Milwaukee snow totals of almost 20 inches. Grand Rapids, Central Michigan, you know, northern Indiana. Look at these snow totals. These are, this is, this is winter. It's back looking into the northeast and it's winter. So we do have ice in the, in the mix though. That could uh, mix in with some of this uh, system coming in tomorrow afternoon and evening across the Ohio Valley. Um, and it could make for some slick spots. We'll have to see what uh, what happens here with latest model data. Nonetheless, something we need to watch very closely. Again, all this avail available on the Clarity platform. You can visit BAMWX.com and, uh, and try it out. So let's take a look here. I'm going to, again, kind of give you a... a a glimpse into my world here. I'm speaking today at the Farm Credit Mid-America Conference down here in Louisville to a bunch of the, their growers and clients down here. This is a look at winter to date using the, the ranks for um, climatology, the, essentially um, the, the climate districts. And we're looking at where does it rank out of 133 years for winter? Well, it's the driest ever in the desert southwest. If you see the number 133 there, it means it's the driest it's ever been. Look at 128 in southern Wisconsin. About to change that. It's been the least snowiest winter in the Chicago ORD airport for 81 years. All right. About to change it. It's about to snow. Um, it's also been very, very warm in the south and west. One of the warmest and driest winters on record uh, down there across the southwest. A check on drought conditions shows there has been improvement since winter started across the deep south, the Ohio Valley, but there's been some... Um, there's been some 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 drier trends, obviously in the Central Plains and the Desert Southwest. I am yet very concerned um, as we look further ahead into the spring and summer season for drought growth here. And I'm going to talk more about that uh, quickly today if I have time. I don't want to make this video too long, but I am going to talk more about that here as I go throughout the outlook today. Just look at the last 30 days on the left. It really hasn't rained in Nebraska or Iowa. Uh, it's, it's rather remarkable. The last 60 days, it's been very, very dry um, from the, the central to south central plains. I mean, you can see the central plains in the last 30 days. And again, even into the Ohio Valley, it's just been drier the last 30 days. Look at this. To start the year, to start the year right now, so basically the first uh, 41 days of the year, this essentially has been the driest start ever right here. Since 1893, 
This is this is incredible. It's also been one of the driest starts ever down here. Okay, over here. I mean, look at the, these are this is remarkably dry pattern here. But it's, a lot of that's been to the Arctic air. But this is alarming. If you are in Iowa, southern Minnesota, Wisconsin, you really need moisture. All right. The next ten days, let's take a look at it. This is a look here at the European over the next 10 days. And we're just watching a parade of winter storms. There comes one Wednesday into Thursday. It goes up into the north and east. Arctic High works in, gets very cold behind it. The next one comes the 15th and the 16th. Look at this one. All right, just another big storm, another big pot. That's a, possibly a nor'easter. And and, uh, and then another storm behind this one in the extended, another big storm. There are three to four big storms here in the data right now over the next 10 days. The details need to be ironed out. There's no way to get specific right now, but nonetheless, it's incredible how active this pattern is. It's really, really active. Um, this next big storm may be an a, a, a inner, a inner northeast storm, all right, to inland, not, not coastal. 15th into the 16th could be inland as well with some backside wraparounds, a big low pressure system there. Um, and then the one out to the, the 20th, I've been watching this one for a while, 21st, that could be another big one. Uh, again, just a very, very active pattern. The next 10 days for rainfall and snowfall, again, show just a crazy, um, just just intercoastal, you know, not, not interior northeast, if you will, uh, snowfall numbers. Coastal, yeah, I mean, I'm not saying you're ruled out. The pattern's active. There's a lot to sift through. But just look at the snow everywhere. Some of you watching through central Indiana are probably looking at this and saying, what the hell is going on right here? <laughs> a lot of the models have this void. And it's because you've got a storm coming through here, and then you've got a storm coming through here, multiple one kind of like this. And so you're left in this transition zone. I think if you're in this area here, better chances are coming than the 15th and beyond of February. Be patient. Don't take maps verbatim. Generally speaking, there's a lot of snow possible here. Very, very wet. The deep south, maybe some severe weather chances. But look at it. I mean, the next two weeks, it's crazy. It's just, it's just, it's cold. Cold works in. By the way, long advertised here. We've talked about this for a while. This cold coming back into the picture and winter coming multiple storms. Uh, I mean, I think we're tracking over the next six weeks. I think there could be five to six major winter storms over the next six weeks. I think I'm just going to put that out there. It's just no, this is not a pattern to sleep on right now as it's an active one. The national heating demand, uh, looking at the gas weighted heating degree days above 10 and 30 year normals. Um, the only model right now that d dips below uh, you can see is that GFS model out through the 24th, but the ensembles overnight, the GFS, the European, the European operational, all trending well above 10 and 30 year normals. We've even got the European op going 40 plus days uh, of HDD units. If for those of you that knows what that means, that's cold. Very active week one. As we get further into MJO 8, 1, and 2, it'll get drier next week, which is a little bit normal. Um, we'll talk about that in just a second. But the extended winter idea has been around for a while. Look, this I mean, this is what's going to happen here. And this was supposed to play, and I apologize, it's not playing. But I'll tell you what happens, okay? You get the warming from both sides. And what's happening is, is we're splitting this into two. It's not the traditional vortex split by definition of a wind reversal, but the vortex is splitting. A lobe of the, the stratospheric and tropospheric polar vortex come down. It gets very cold nonetheless. It's an extended version of winter. Not to mention you have the tropical forcing that also is in play with this. All right, I'm going to move this here just real quick so you can uh, see this better. Let me keep it there for just a moment. Uh, but you can see that going through 7, 8, 1, 2, most likely going to go into three at this point or even four. Don't see a reason why this stops. And you see the cold lingering, phase one, phase two, phase three. All right. And again, I think if you're looking at, at, at areas for uh, concentration of, of winter storms, um, you're looking probably going to be a continuation of, of something um, in phase one. You're probably going to be, you know, really, they're all going to be about the same, really, you know, uh, it, this is just a this is just a very very favorable look for continued winter storm threats. 
Um, better chances in the Midwest, the Ohio Valley, especially getting into two and three. So nonetheless, this hangs around. You know, we talk about it, it being a, a, an extended winter. I mean, three to seven day outlook is loaded uh, with impactful winter storm potential here and, and, and storms across the deep south. You go into the 16 to 30 day outlook, we're favoring below normal temperatures to continue much below, perhaps. HDD is at 370. Uh, looks like my map might be over. There we go. And uh, uh, drier to the north and to the west. Again, this is not good news. I know you're going to get a big winter uh, snow event in here, but liquid equivalent is not going to be nearly what it needs to be. Um, the central U.S., the north central plains dry signal worries me. Wet down to the south and east. Again, in the 16 to 30 from February 25th to March 10th, if you're wanting to look for a big snowstorm, a couple of big winter storm potentials. You always kind of want to cut these areas in half like this. This is probably where you're going to continue to look at chances for winter storms, uh, snow, ice, you know, you name it, those types of things. Um, nonetheless, heating demand, looking at the last four runs of the CFS V2, okay, um, the average is pretty consistent that we are above 10 and 30 year normals through at least the first half of March. The latest run of the CFS had some milder uh, trends. The three runs prior to that kept HDDs above average. Um, when you look at the March forecast that we have, colder than average in the east and the southeast. Wet into the central, or I'm sorry, to the Ohio Valley, deep south and Great Lakes. Drier to the east coast, possibly. I will say, I, I, I do have concerns about precipitation through here for now. Could it trend wetter here as the MJO uh, offers up some changes? Possibly, but I have concerns about dry conditions uh, nonetheless. So if you're still watching, real quick, I'm going to give a seasonal forecast update, getting out into spring if you're interested. Again, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, share it with a friend, and uh, we'll get into a quick seasonal forecast update here for you. Right now, model data continuing to hint at a cool, neutral Enzo. Um, getting into the growing season. The June, July, August phase uh, or, or spot would be right here. Um, you know, some data trying to warm it a little bit, um, you know, and, and possibly suggest El Nino, weak El Nino flavors or potential. I don't see that happening right now. European has, has uh, though, gone somewhat aggressive with trying to at least suggest um, some weak El Nino conditions. Nonetheless, you can see the current setup has a La Nina-like, uh, you know, ocean temperature profile setting up. Um, top spring analogs right now, okay, looking wet east, dry west is the kind of the idea, keeping it cooler overall across the top and uh, a warmer dome there, south central, southwest U.S. Most recent spring uh, years to compare to 18, 14, and 11. All right, when we look at the top ocean analogs for spring, again, indications are wet east into the deep south, all right, which could mean a shift, continuing to see the shift east in the tornado season, severe weather season of deep south tornado threats. And um, overall, not a, not a huge uh, mild signal for spring, average to slightly below average temperatures. If you look at just 2011, by the way, was a very active um, severe weather season, especially in the deep south. Uh, very, very active. You probably remember the tornado outbreak of 2011, but you can see wet east, drier to the central, south central U.S. Some warm signals out ahead of these storm systems, probably. This is the spring using, again, just 2011. Okay. Model data for spring. Well, it's very, it's very wet in the Ohio Valley. All right. And a little bit further south. Okay. For the, the very deep south is dry in the model data. We can continue to see some indications, though, lower probabilities of above normal temperatures. The highest probabilities are in the deep south. If you ask the European model for spring, uh, it's wet east, dry west. You can see these models have a warm bias <laughs> over the top. It's probably a lot cooler than this, but nonetheless, you get the point here. Okay. Um, looking here at the uh, official spring outlook from BAM weather right now, again, cooler spring. Wet in the east, dry in the central plains, wet in the Pacific Northwest. Warmer in the south and the southwest is the general idea. If we had a preliminary look at summer right now, preliminary look at summer, here's what it would entail. 
a dry risk in the Central Plains. And I'm concerned about a little bit of a drought this year. All right, there could be an active uh, storm flow pattern maybe in the eastern part of the country where the precipitation can ride up and over a ridge. But it's a hot signal in the Central Plains and a dry one. It's cooler and wetter east is the preliminary thought process for summer. <coughs> if you use 2011, which is the top ocean analog right now, it's kind of variable with precipitation. Um, it's got a ridge in the deep south, an active flow over the top with hit or miss precipitation. Um, 2011 was a little bit of a warmer summer. Okay. Our idea late spring, summer right now is drought concerns in the central U.S. Okay, with a more active cooler pattern into the east. That's our idea right now. And an early look at data would, would kind of hint that. When you look at the European seasonal forecast, um, you can kind of see this this here, the, the idea we have of warmer and drier conditions here and wetter and cooler conditions in the east. That's the ECMWF seasonal. This is the latest multi-model ensemble. This was a pretty aggressive forecast run. Um, very, very dry signal here and a big ridge here. This could indicate over the top thunderstorm flow you know, signals. Uh, nonetheless, guys, concerning um, model data again, showing some hints of a hotter and drier summer in the central plains um, for sure. So um, preliminarily, uh, you know, it's an interesting fact here that five of the last six growing seasons have been below trend yields. Why? Well, on the left, you can see it's been very dry in Minnesota, Iowa, Nebraska, Kansas, northern Illinois, northern Indiana over the last um, six summers. Okay, growing seasons, and it's just generally been warmer. There's not overly favorable conditions for, the, for, uh, for agriculture, for, you know, the corn. Okay, early idea is that we could be looking at another below trend yield for corn, right? Looking at the analog years. Early ideas is, a, is a, another slightly below, or not another, but a, a, a slightly below trend soybean um, yield as well in that regard. So just something to think about there um, as we get further into the summer. So, you know, again, this is kind of the idea. Um, we'll continue to keep you posted if you're still watching. For now, this is the spring forecast and uh, it's a cooler spring. It's an active spring east and especially in the, in the, in the south. Um, with the potential of the um, growing season to turn warmer and drier in the west, but stay cooler, perhaps a little bit cooler and stormier in the east. So that's all we have. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Share it with a friend. Talk to you soon.